why we live in Arizona. <laughs> you get this time of year. So happy to have you with us today. I'm Dennis Smith. I'll be your, your instructor, your teacher, during the, uh, the seminar. And uh, I remember a little bit ago to turn off my phone. I've had that happen a couple times when I'm teaching. It goes off. It's frustrating for me. But we're really glad you're here, and I do want to point out a couple of things to you. Uh, for convenience, a um, little housekeeping. I should, you came in the back doors if you want a drink and a nice water fountain. Uh, it's cool. Water, go out to the right when you see a water fountain on your left. And also, if you go just a little bit further, there's a hallway on the left, and the restrooms are down there. So, uh, those are there for you, of course. And when you arrive today, you should have received a lesson called Revelation, the Open Book. And an envelope, and I'll talk to you about this a little bit later. This will give you a chance to grade me and <laughs> see how well I do. It is a quiz, and uh, we'll, we'll see how you do it. How uh, you do it, depends on well I taught it. And also, um, you, you should have received a pen if you need one uh, to fill out the lesson. Because our, our goal of the seminar is to really get into God's Word. And we want you to have the lessons to keep, the materials are for you to keep, fill them out. And uh, today, of course, the first class, you received the lesson when you came in. But when you leave today, you're going to receive the next lesson. So you can take it home, fill it out, then you know exactly what's coming for the next time. And you may have some questions that you're welcome to, uh, to write down on, on your lesson. And did anyone not receive the material today. Please raise your hand. We want to make sure everybody got it. Wonderful. Good. Ladies are doing a good job back there. Also, you, uh, many of you, I know, brought your, your own Bibles, and that's great. Um, if you didn't, uh, you're welcome to use uh, one of the Revelation Seminar Bibles. You will see some Bibles in front of you, a little holder on the back of the seat in front of you. And uh, you're welcome to use those if you want uh, for our lesson today. And one thing kind of unique with this particular Bible uh, is designed with the lessons in mind. So for instance, if you were to turn to page four in your lesson, there you will find the first question, which we'll a little later be going through. And if you look at the text that's there, have to have to move. it says Revelation chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, 1 through 5 and on. And then you're going to see a number in parentheses, 1800. See that? A little 1800 there? Well, if you were to use the seminar Bible to find that text, you would turn to page 1800. Now, this, this Bible is used for several different series, and so the numbering for this series, you see, if you open the Bible, there's two numbers in the center at the bottom. It's the right of the two numbers. So that would say 1800. So that, that's one benefit of using that Bible. It helps you to uh, define. And I thought I might do that. I am one over there. And it's filling close to the electrical bug. Hopefully it doesn't hit. Okay. Um, also, as you leave today, as I mentioned, you will receive a lesson for next time. And our next meeting is on Wednesday. We have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. We have two lessons a day on those days. We have a 1031 and a 7 o'clock one. And the reason we do that, we know there are some folks that can't come in the morning and they can have an opportunity in the evening. Secondly, if you may have an appointment sometime during the morning, and if you do, you can come to the evening meeting on that day and you won't miss anything because we'll go through the, the same lesson. So that, that works as an advantage in a, in a couple of ways. And we have one other thing that uh, I think you'll appreciate. Uh, this will be, I think that's one of the ladies, that little cow, <laughs> a little glass of water right out of here. I should have brought a bottle. Um, 
We have a binder for you next Monday. And the reason for that, as you can see, you're getting a lesson now, and you're going to get one Wednesday, and also the, the lesson's going to build up. And if you're like me, if I get a lesson and I can set it aside before it's long, the lesson disappears somewhere. But we want you to have the lessons and to be able to keep the lessons, and that's what the plan would be for. I'm going to have these available for you next time to, to put your lessons in. Okay. Well, let's have a, a little prayer and stuff. Father in heaven, we thank you that we have your word and this opportunity today to study your word. And I pray that you will draw near through your Holy Spirit, that you will fill this place where we are gathered with your presence, and that you will grant to us the understanding through your spirit of the teachings of your word that you know are important for us to know as we approach our Lord's return. So I pray that you will remove anything from our hearts and minds that would be a barrier to receiving the blessing that you have for us. We know these things are your will, and we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. You know, uh, there's a lot of speculation, and I'm sure some of you have seen some of this. Thank you. Appreciate that. Sorry about that. There's a lot of speculation about what's going to happen in this world. Other words, I, mean, I remember saying something, I think it was a chat or something, where they had different specialists talk about what they thought they might bring it in. How uh, did you read it? The things, you know, it's going to be climate change and the right sea levels, increase in natural disasters, and of course, there's many, many things happening in the world that can cause us to, to wonder. But I'd like for us to start off uh, by looking at Matthew chapter 24. You know, Jesus had some important things to say about this. Matthew chapter 24. That would, if you're using the Seminar Bible, that's page 1439. Matthew 24. Let's notice here verses 4 through 7. Jesus told us. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now let's go over to the text in Luke. Chapter, Luke chapter 21 is more or less a parallel chapter in the Gospel of Luke to Matthew chapter 24. And notice what Luke had to say here in, in verse 25 and 26. He's also given a similar list here that Jesus gave. And then he, he added this, the words of Jesus. Verse 25 and 26 of Luke chapter 21. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars upon the earth as just the nations with perplexity. You think the nations are perplexed today? I think so. With perplexity. The sea and the way of world. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Jesus sure knew what he was talking about. And he gave us those words about 2,000 years ago. You know, movies are made about these kind of things too, as you well know. Uh, one called Category 7. You know, many are worried about Is there going to be some massive storm uh, to, to wipe out civilization or cease, at least wipe out in certain parts of this world? We know all about hurricanes this year, don't we? Caddy, that was, I guess, one of the first ones I remember to hit down in southern Mexico. I think right as soon as they were caddy, they had an earthquake on that same time. And then Harvey, 
the devastation that Harvey did when it came and hit land in Texas. Terrible. Um, Irma hit the Caribbean. And I, I don't know about you, I, you know, I've been around for a while. This Irma came running down through the Keys and then it went right up the state of Florida. Now usually it goes across or something. I couldn't believe it, but right up the state. Damage, severe damage. Then the poor Caribbean, along came Jose. I cannot imagine what those dear folks are feeling when they had just been, been hit by Irma and now they're told that there's another one coming. Jose it did severe damage too. So um, yes, we are facing severe hurricanes. Also, there are some that are concerned about asteroids. And if you watch some of the science channels, I'm sure you've seen some programs on that. Uh, and there is a concern. Some feel that perhaps asteroids has hit this Earth before. You know, there is what's called an asteroid belt out there. It's, it's actually uh, between Mars and Jupiter. It's unbelievable, you know, you think of these things. And they're, here they're circling in an orbit, and every now and then they bump into one another. And if they bump into one another, who knows where they're going to go. And of course, that's what they're looking for, is to see if one starts coming our direction. And uh, every now and then one gets close. You remember some years ago in Russia, when one of these came in? They didn't even know it was coming. <laughs> it came in in a huge explosion, and, and the damage it did. Uh, some of you have concerns about it. Scientists are actually constantly looking for an asteroid that might approach our, our Earth. I'm not sure if they know exactly what they do, if they uh, saw one coming, but uh, they're looking. Also, global flood to destroy. Um, you know, I, I Googled some time ago, world floods. I, I couldn't believe it. I was, you know, talking about India, Pakistan, and Africa, all these different countries around the world that are facing floods today at the same time. And of course, we know all about floods here, what Houston experienced. They had never experienced anything like that. That hurricane came in and it stopped and just kept pouring the rain. Those, those poor folks just, what did they say? They had to change the color of the weather map <laughs> to, to show the, that amount of rain and what they do, do white or something? I mean, what was it, like 60 inches? I don't know. It, Horrendous amount of rain, horrendous flooding. Of course, they're, they're still cleaning up from that. And God's word indicated, of course, those things. And many worry, of course, about nuclear war. That's been around since the end of World War II. Then it kind of died down a bit, but now we hear more about it again, though. We've got North Korea, Iran, I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, we've also got terrorist groups, they could get a hold of one, they certainly would love to get it from the small one, suitcase type, set it off in the city. Or, you know, you think, what could be worse than that? But as I've done some reading in the Shio 2, if they were to detonate a nuclear weapon a couple hundred miles above us, there's what's called an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, would fry our liquid over it. Everything electronic. We wiped out. Put us back in the dark ages. And they estimate in a matter of just a few weeks, millions would start dying. So uh, it, it seems like it's one thing after another that if millions in the world face starvation, famines, wildfires. Have you had seen that on the news yet lately? Worst that they've ever had in California. Last I heard, 40 plus dead, hundreds missing. 5,700 homes and uh, business destroyed. It's just one thing after another, it truly seems. Earthquakes, you know, Jesus said, Matthew 20, verse 7, earthquakes will be in the first place. And that's certainly true. He just talked about by Mexico City. Another thing that's always fascinating through the years is, you know, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. What was it like in the days of Noah? Genesis 6 1. The earth was filled with violence. Well, it's a pretty good description of the world today, but that terrible event that happened in Las Vegas, and it's just not here. In fact, I just was listening to the news this morning, I guess Boko Haram set up a bomb in, in uh, Somalia. 
biggest explosion they ever had. All over the world, violence breaking out. But Jesus warned us that that would be the case. And not only public gatherings, schools, it's a tragedy. I'd like for you again to turn with me to Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. We read a couple of verses from there. And I want you to notice this time, verse 27 and 28. Jesus just described these signs of the time, signs of his coming. And then he said in verse 27, and then shall you see the Son of Man come in a cloud with power and great glory. You see, these things we just described are signs along the way that the coming of our Lord is soon. And then he said, verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, did he say did he get discouraged? No. <laughs> no. When these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. As Christians, we have hope. We don't have to get, live in anxiety and fear of these things. In fact, we know they will be because Jesus told us these kind of things would take place. And then there's concerns in the spiritual realm. If you were to Google Antichrist, you'd get all kinds of Answers coming up. Who's the Antichrist? What is it? What's that all about? Or what about the mark of the beast? And how do we avoid getting it? We're going to look at these things uh, through this seminar. And it's very important we under some, understand some things about God, especially in the day in which we're living today. Over in Revelation chapter. 7, verse 1 to 3. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. We're thinking of 7. Verse 1 to 3. Revelation 7, verse 1 to 3. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth nor in the sea, nor in any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, but we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That gives me courage. Yes, things look bad. Sometimes it appears Satan's in control. But let me tell you, from God's word, he's not. We serve a sovereign God. And this scripture tells us that God is actually holding back the greatest winds of destruction. He's letting some come. He wants to wake us up to the facts of where we're living in time. But Sorry, the worst is yet to come, but it will not come until God's people are ready. That's what the ceiling is talking about. We'll have a chance to study that in, in this series. I kind of look at it like uh, God didn't let the flood come until the boat was ready. And we know Noah was warning them, it's coming. Then the day came to get in, and when they were ready, then the flood came. And that's how it will be at the, at the end of time, as Jesus said, as we look at the other text, as in the days of Noah. Also, I'm going to have you turn to Isaiah chapter 46. Another very hopeful text to me of the God we serve. My wife and I, we often talk about God being sovereign God as we watch the news and as we reflect on what's going on in the world. This is a very wonderful text. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Now notice this. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure yes through the natural eye it may appear Satan's in control but through the eye of faith as we get enlightened by God's word, he's not. God is in control. Amen. We serve a sovereign God. Amen. And, and that is one of the reasons God has given us the book of Revelation and prophecy is because he wants us to understand what's coming upon this world so that we can make the right decisions and be found on the Lord's side. So the Bible contains many prophecies about the future. And it's absolutely important that we understand these prophecies. Because remember, Jesus warned us, take heed that no man deceive you. I guarantee you, Satan will try to deceive you and me. In fact, I will guarantee you, Satan doesn't want you here today. And if we had time, I'm sure many of you would have a story to tell of how Satan tried to keep you from getting here. He hates God's word. He hates for God to show us. And I look at it this way. It pulls back the curtain of what's going on. And we can understand the real issues of this world. And we need not be deceived by Satan. Also, Jesus said, there shall arise false Christ. False prophets, they'll be showing great signs and wonders. We never want our faith to be based on signs and wonders. God can do signs and wonders. All you have to do is read the Bible and you see them. But Satan can too. We always want our faith to be based on God's word. And not simply signs and wonders. So he says there'll be false Christ, false prophets, showing great signs and wonders. That if it were possible, it would see the very elect. <clears throat> now the book of Revelation contains many amazing prophecies which we'll have a chance to study that tells us what's going to happen in this world. So, we're going to take a couple minutes now and let's do a little preview uh, of what we're going to be looking at in the book of Revelation. The lesson you're going to receive when you leave today is about Jesus, the hero of the book of the of the Revelation. <clears throat> and um, this study we're going to have is very significant to me because we're going to look at a prophecy that impacted my life actually when I was in college uh, many years ago. Um, there was a time I doubted the existence of God. There was a time I had no faith in the Bible. And then God led me to study. And the prophecy we're going to look at tomorrow concerning Christ himself God used that prophecy to convince me there's a God. And then to convince me this is his word. And I can tell you that I was a young man back then. I, I'm so thankful that God revealed himself to me way back then. You know, and as, as you know, it's wonderful knowing what God teaches and having the answers to the basic questions of life. Where do we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? <laughs> What's our destiny? Well, folks, we have a wonderful destiny through Jesus Christ. And God's word tells us what that destiny is. And, G and Satan's going to try to do everything he can to get in the way of us getting there. But we don't have to be deceived by his lies. And that, that's what this series is all about. We also have a chance to look at, as we look at Revelation chapter 2 and 3, there, there are seven messages to seven churches. Now these are actual churches that were in Asia Minor. Our today church. But it's also a description of the Christian church through history. From the early church to today. Now God has a children in all the churches. No church, I don't think, has a corner of that. Um, but that tells us then that the message to the seventh church, it's called the Odyssea, we have a chance to look at that. That message is important for all of us. Because there's some important warnings in that. We have a chance to look at that. Give a little history there. You know, when it comes to prophecy, 
Remember, John was writing around 90 or so A.D., shortly after the time of Christ. And so what he writes about covers from his time to the end of time. And so what we actually have in prophecies there are world events that God foretold before that happened. Now for us, living 2,000 years later, we look back and it's history. But the nice thing about that, God can use that to even reinforce our faith. Because we see what God prophesied to happen did happen. And you know what that can do for our faith now? What he prophesies will still happen, will happen. And it can give us confidence, percent in his word. So we have a chance to look at that. Also, the opening of the mysterious sealed book, chapter 4 and 5. I'm sure you've heard about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We have a chance to look at that. Again, it's a historical perspective. And the sealing of God's people. Very important, as, as we saw in the scripture we read in Revelation 7. The angels are holding back the final destruction until God's people are sealed. You want to understand what that is? Seven trumpets. Again, another fascinating historical study. Vince leading right up to our day. Revelation even describes the experience of God's people. It's called a bittersweet experience. And that's a very interesting study what it has to look at. The two witnesses. Revelation 11. You know, the Bible, there's two women described. One is the pure woman describing the church of uh, Revelation chapter 12. We'll have a chance to study what the Bible says about God's church. And uh, we also have a chance to look at the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast. And that's very important for our day. Who is the Antichrist? What is the Mark of the Beast? We don't want to receive that. And so we get to understand the issues are there. And then Revelation 14, that's a very fascinating chapter. It's divided into three parts. It describes God's last people, the trading of Jesus, and the message they give to prepare the world. You know, no end of the message to prepare what God's people does in time. And it describes the message, all these three angels. And lastly, it describes Christ's coming. Very fascinating chapter by the chance of that. Very applicable to our day. Uh, the great for God's wrath. This is the seven last plagues. They're not very pleasant. Uh, I'll give you a little secret, but I'm, you know, it, it's it's amazing how God is so loving and patient. He accepts us where we're at. When I was in college, as I said, that's when I first started studying the Bible. I was a senior engineering student, and um, I learned about heaven, and I learned about the seven last plagues. I did not want to receive the seven last plagues. I don't want to go to heaven. That was the motivation God used to get me to start moving forward with him. And again, I, I appreciate him so much. He takes us where we're at. We may be so young in the faith, and our motivation may be so, so simple and shallow, but he says, that's okay. That's where I accept you. And then, of course, he helps us grow from there. So this study is kind of snipping to me. It certainly played a role in my book with the Lord. And then I said, there's two women. This is the second woman. That one, the great mystic carbon. We'll talk about that. Important to understand because, you know, again, that's the common. The rider on the white horse, Jesus coming back to deliver his people. Uh, this study of Revelation 20, the uh, thousand years, millennium. This is one of my favorites because it puts together like a puzzle, it puts many different pieces together of these prophecies so you can see them all right together. Uh, so that, that's. Very fascinating study. And then God even talks to us, shows us in his word about the wonderful future he has for us. New earth, new Jerusalem, new heavens. Uh, very precious. So, there's a little preview. And we're going to have a chance to actually get in our lesson here. And there are some basic keys we need to understand. Is that not working? My PA fellow is telling me maybe something's not working. Do you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, I can hear me. <laughs> okay. Um, there's some keys we need to understand here in the uh, book of Revelation. I don't know if you realize this. There's 404 verses in the book of Revelation. 
Did you realize that 276 of them come from the Old Testament? That's amazing. A key, then, is to allow these other portions of Scripture to help us interpret Revelation. Because God, when He pulls something out of the Old Testament and wants to use it to apply to something in the New Testament, well, it's good to know, what did that mean over here? What was going on here? Why do you use it there? And then we can bring it over. Also, another important principle here is Isaiah 28, verse 10. This, this is very, very crucial. Isaiah 28.10. Isaiah 28.10. You'll find us doing this many times. It's, it's letting the Bible interpret it itself. He says, For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little bit of and that's an important principle of studying the Bible. Comparing Scripture with Scripture. For example, we're all familiar with the Jews. I haven't had the patience for these thousand pieces. But, uh, let's say we had one here. And I pick a piece of it and it's blue. I say, you know, to me that looks like stuff. Now you pick a piece, blue. You say, no, I, I think it's water. Hmm. We don't know for sure until we put it together with the other pieces, right? And maybe we're both wrong. Maybe it's a blue on the dress or something. But that's how the Bible is. You see, we, if we just take one verse, we could go off in many directions. But if we let the Bible itself compare Scripture with Scripture, then we can get the true understanding because I'm a firm believer. It really doesn't matter what I think. This is what matters. What this teaches. And I try to hold myself accountable to that. That, you know, if there's something that comes along, it may be new to me. There's a lot of truth out there. I don't know. God may bring something to me. And I may say, oh, I don't know about that. But I've tried to hold myself accountable. If I can see it from God's word, then I'm one. Then I'm safe. And then and that's the principle again, compare with scripture. And we won't take time with the other one, but it's just it's the same idea of comparing scripture things to spiritual. So let's turn to our lesson here and let's start moving down through it. Turn to the um, page four in question one. Take the list now. All that will come to the question. This being the first class, I'm going to take a little time to do a little introduction for you. Um, as we get into our second third support, we'll, we'll jump more quickly into the lesson. We're going to have some foundation here for us. But here we go to uh, it's Revelation chapter 1 is where we find the answer to the question. And here's the question. It says here, the book of Revelation passed through five steps to reach us. What are they? Okay, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. And this is myself. Okay, Revelation 1. 1 through 5. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be to you and peace from him, which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits, which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, 
and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, we need to go to verse 11 as well, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, these are the words of Jesus, the first and the last, and what you see is write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And then the last verse is verse 19. Write these things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Okay, there's the verses. Now, let's fill in the answers. Who did God give it to? Jesus. Jesus. The Father gave it to Jesus. So you write Jesus. Jesus. Who did Jesus give it to? The angel. Kind of interesting here. Gives us a little insight of how things work sometimes. <laughs> Father gave it to Jesus. Jesus gave it to the angel. Who did the angel give it to? John. Ah, John. Did you give it to John? What did John do with it? Wrote it down. The Bible here used the word book. They didn't really have books back then. They had what's called manuscripts. And so it had been written down by hand in one of these parchment manuscripts. Roll up. What did John do with it? Sent it to the churches. Yeah, these are the seven churches. Okay. Now let's notice the second question. And it comes from the same section of Scripture. God promises a special blessing to those who do what? Read, hear, and keep. You know, in, in the Hebrew, this is written in Greek, but they're Jewish. Give context. Um, in the Hebrew, to hear it, is to do it. We use that same expression today as parents. We may tell our child, didn't you hear what I said? Now, did you know they heard you? But they didn't do it, right? So in the Bible, there's that concept. To hear it, you do it. And something else here. This is the only place I know in a particular book in the Bible where a special blessing is promised in the study of Revelation. And I can guarantee you, I, I've had a chance to teach Revelation in many places in the United States, many countries in the world, and I can tell you it's true. As we have opportunity to delve into the book of Revelation, it will be a blessing to our, our walk with the Lord, to our life, to our families, and of course, it, it, what a future blessing to leave us, to leave not once to go. Now let's go to um, the next question. When did Jesus say this? Who, who did Jesus say the scriptures review? Let's go to John 5.39. This is a, an extremely important principle, by the way, when you come to interpreting scripture. John 5.39. Jesus said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are, pardon? Oh, we're in verse 39, sorry. Uh, John chapter 5, verse 39. Sorry. It's all right. I want everyone to be sure you're there. Because again, we want to know what the Word of God teaches, believe me on this thing. Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So we've got the question, who did Jesus say the Scriptures reveal? Himself. Now let me ask you this. Which part of the Bible did Jesus have? Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament. New Testament wasn't written yet. So what Jesus is saying here, in fact, the whole Old Testament testifies of Jesus. Let me give you an example. Of course, one, one simple example is the, the sanctuary service. You know, they, they offered the sacrifice for their sins. Of course, Jesus is our sacrifice. A priest and the sanctuary, of Jesus and a priest, all that stuff playing Jesus. Also, there's something called uh, typology. That was typology. Uh, here's another one. Many stories in the Old Testament reveal Jesus. 
Give me an example. Remember the story of, of Joseph, the son of Jacob? Now, he was kind of spoiled, right? His father gave him a coat of many colors, and he kind of strutted around with it. I didn't go over so well with his other older brothers. And um, they didn't like him. Well, one day, Joseph left his father, saw his brethren, and when his brethren saw him, they were angry at him, and they were going to kill him. Remember the story? Uh, well, God held back that part of their anger, but he didn't hold it all back. He was thrown in a pit, sold as a slave to an Ishmaelite caravan. He was sent to Egypt, sold as a slave. Now, he's only about 60 years old. I can't imagine what was going through his head. He's, he's, he's on his way to Egypt. He's sold as a slave. He got a pretty good master, though, Potiphar. And he's, uh, he's made the steward of Potiphar's household. You know, taking care of everything. But then Potiphar's wife tries to seduce him. He says no. And she accuses him. And he's thrown in prison. For bad words. Not a very pleasant place to be back then. They're in prison. And you know the story. You know, he ended up interpreting dreams. And in due time, he ended up being exalted right next to Pharaoh. He became the second most powerful man in the world. And a famine came. And Joseph's brothers heard that there was food in Egypt. And they come. Joseph recognized them, he tests them, and they proved they had changed. He reveals himself, and his family come. What does that teach about Jesus? He's a type of Christ. Christ left his father. Joseph left his father, seeking his brother. When he came to his brother, they abused him. When Christ came, his servant was abused and crucified. As a result of the suffering that Joseph went through, he was exalted to the right hand of Pharaoh. As a result of the suffering Jesus went through, he's exalted to the right hand of the Father. And as a result of the suffering Joseph went through, he became a savior of his brethren. And as a result of the suffering Jesus went through, he becomes our savior. So when Jesus said, all scripture testify of me, he knew what he was talking about. And, and there's many, many stories in, in the Bible, the Old Testament, that are, are types of Christ. And then you see that in the, in the next scripture here. Um, in question four, he says, when explaining prophecy, what approach did Jesus use? Here we're over in Luke chapter 24. These were some disciples on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus had been crucified. And they were discouraged, of course. Why did this happen? What's going on? And notice here, Luke 24. And we want to look at verse 25. He's talking to them, explaining to them. Luke 24, 25 to 27. Then he said to them, O foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? And get into his glory, and beginning in Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And that's how you fill in your blanks. He expounded to them in all the scriptures. Get the other Old Testament: Moses, prophets, things concerning himself. Again, as we mentioned, remember, 26 of the 39 books of the Old Testament are quoted in the book of Revelation. Here's a little example. First five chapters of Revelation. The first chapter of the Old Testament is quoted 27 times. Chapter 2, 15 times. 3, 13, 4, 16, 5, 14. It just constantly, constantly, constantly pulls from the Old Testament. And that's why we'll have an opportunity to compare both. 
our scripture is scripture to get a clear idea of what Revelation is, is talking about. Now we notice here that as we look at scripture, uh, how it's, it's presented to us, the question here, we read this earlier, Revelation 1 1. We're told here, what does Revelation 1 1 say the angel did to the message of Revelation when he gave it to John? It says he signified it by a danger. That means to communicate by signs. Symbols. So Revelation is certainly filled with a lot of symbols, right? We will have opportunity to see what these symbols mean. Also, how does Revelation 1 1 say he presented the message to his servants? To show them to them. Yes, to show them. So you fill in the blank. To show. The old English word is shoe. Show. His servants. Panoramic view. Of events in the world that should take place. Here's an interesting one. It says here, why did Jesus speak in parables? He told the book of Revelation of Sin. He did that when he, he walked the earth. Notice here in Luke 8, verse 10. I should have been there. Luke 8, verse 10. Oh, it's nice to hear those pages there in the beginning of the world. Luke chapter 8, verse 10. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Interesting um, answer Jesus gave. Here, here's your answer that seeing. Or they, they could see the words that we were reading. But they might not truly see it. And hearing, you know, we're hearing the word. But they might not understand. Well, there's a couple of things here. The Bible is unique. If you really don't have an honest heart to understand it, you won't. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Back when I was in college again, a friend and I, um, we were both engineering students, and this is back in the time when I didn't really believe in God or the Bible. We happened to get the Bible one day. We're sitting there and we're reading Genesis. And we're reading about the creation. And we're kind of making fun of it. How would anyone know what was going on with the creation? Who was there? You know? We didn't get a thing out of it. Because we weren't coming to it with an open wanting to learn. And also, we must have the Holy Spirit guide us. That's why we have prayer before we study. And that's why, and I know many of you know that, whenever you take these lessons home, take it home, have prayer before you study it. Because it's the Holy Spirit that gave the book, it's the Holy Spirit that gives us understanding in the book. So if you want to know, we certainly can know. Now, here's a couple of symbols here um, to see how the symbols come about. Uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. I'll show you how these symbols work. Daniel 7, verse 23. Daniel 7 is a chapter of history, kind of Babylon on down. And notice here in verse 23, it's kind of defining what it is. Daniel 7, 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. So beast. What did these beasts represent? Kingdom. You see, the Bible will interpret itself. Now let me ask you this. Do we use beasts to represent kingdoms today? Let's say I use uh, lions. What country do you think of? Huh? England? Yeah. Modern. <laughs> Atlanta. England. Uh, Bear. Russia. Dragon. China. Eagle. Yeah. See, we do that today, no different. Probably does that too. 
But the key is, we want to be careful, we do not impose 21st century meaning on symbols that go way back in time. And that's why when we study the word, we have to let the Bible tell us what those symbols mean. Otherwise, we get off into all kinds of tangents. Um, here's kind of an interesting one when we go to um, Revelation 12, Revelation 17, 15. Another symbol. 17, 15. And he said unto me, the waters which you saw where the horses are, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So in Revelation here, water has a symbolic meaning of people. So that would be your answer there. Here's a very important one, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6. Here's a very important key to interpret prophecy. Ezekiel 4, verse 6. And when you have accomplished them, lie them on your right side, and you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Now, here's the Bible principle of interpreting prophecy. In Bible prophecy, now this is prophecy, this isn't history. When you're studying Bible prophecy, a day equals a year in reality. Now, this principle has been understood since the 8th century. You've got Jewish scholars, you can read historically and writers. Jewish scholars understood it. Roman Catholic scholars understood it. Protestant scholars understood day year principle. A day in prophecy is a year in reality. And then I noticed the lesson here give you another one. I won't take time to look it up, but you can write the text down if you want. And Isaiah 66 talks about chariots. And if you're comparing Psalm 68, 17, it would point out the chariots are angels. So there's again another symbol. One thing you have in your lesson, by the way, a blue piece of paper. It's called 18 Golden Keys. This is something that I think you're going to want to keep. It lists the symbols in Revelation. 88 different symbols in, Re in Revelation and their meaning. A very nice reference sheet for you. For your attention to that. Now let's go into the authority of the Bible. How reliable are the words of prophecy? Let's go over here to 2 Peter 1. How reliable is this? 2 Peter 1. And notice verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. Then notice verse 19. We have also the more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that you take heed unto a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawn and the day of star to rise in the heart. So, filling in the blank, they were eyewitnesses. You can count on what they say that it is true. And you have a more sure word of prophecy. You can depend on prophecy. What it says is true. And what it says will happen. But the important thing, we have to be sure we understand what it says. And that we interpret it. Correct. Now, God gives a, uh, a warning here, a couple of warnings. Notice here, we're here in 2 Peter chapter 1. Notice verse 20. Knowing this, first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. That's how you fill in that answer. What does it mean to have a private interpretation? Uh, that's like that puzzle example I gave you. I think it's water. You think it's sky blue. That's a, a private interpretation. How do we know? Let's put it in the puzzle. And we'll find out what it means. 
That's how it is with the Bible. Again, you and I have come up with all kinds of different conclusions on, on the different scriptures. But that could be a private interpretation. No, we need two things. We need the Holy Spirit to give us insight. And we need to compare other scriptures. So those are the two very important principles. Then we can avoid having what would be called private interpretation. And then notice this next one. Here's a serious warning in Revelation. I mean, it is serious. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22. Verse 18 and 19. He says here, For I testify unto you, unto every man that hears the words from the prophecy of this book. If any man add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man should take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now that's a pretty serious point. Uh, we are not to add to and we're not to take away. Take it as it reads. Don't add to and don't take away. And um, I'll just give the answers here as we go into the next one here that asked about God. Um, since God says the revelation is not now and never has been sealed, why is it that so many feel that it's a closed book and sealed and cannot be understand? Well, Satan's strategy is to claim it is sealed. And this is, um, I had this personal experience. When I first started getting in, into the Bible and the revelation, I, I went to a pastor. I won't say a denomination. I went to a pastor and I said, well, what about revelation? Because I started learning something. And he said, oh, that's some um, way out dream John had. Who knows what it means? <laughs> so, um, it, it, then he will tell you that. It's sealed. You know how to learn. You can't understand. I can guarantee you. You don't have to be a genius, because I'm not a genius. But I think God's given me some understanding in it. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that gives us that understanding. It's not sealed. And you don't have to have a doctorate degree to understand it. How much of the scriptures inspired? What do you think the answer to that is? You're right. He said, all scriptures give the inspiration of God. And when that was written to, to Timothy by Paul, the only scripture available was the Old Testament. So both the Old Testament and the New Testament, all scripture given by God is inspired. And over here, if we twist scripture, Give me the answer to this. Very significant text. He says, that actually, if we twist it, it'll lead to our own destruction. If we're take it and don't really study it, we should. Some important keys. Again, I'll go through these. One key, 1 Corinthians 2.14. Again, you have these. You can take a moment and look at them. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Remember I told you about when my friend and I were reading Genesis? We weren't spiritual. So we did the same. I'm Revelation 21 6 says, I must thirst. You know, I think everyone here, all of us, are thirsting for truth. We have to get some effort in here today. Every one of you did. And God says, if we thirst for truth, okay, we'll be satisfied. That's important. And in 2 Timothy, this is a very good one, he says in Acts, um, we must study the Bible and test all beliefs. And, and, I, and that's my challenge always at a seminar. And that's why we send these lessons home with you. We want you to study it out for yourself. We want you to know from God's Word what is being taught. That's what's important. It doesn't matter what I teach or believe. What matters is what the Bible teaches. And that's why sometimes if someone will ask me a good question, well, Dennis, what do you think about this or that? I don't like to give an answer. I say, well, let's look and see what the Bible says on that. And um, you may ask a question like that. Sometimes during the seminar, I may give that answer. I say, well, we're going to cover that. 
And because, again, I don't want God's word uh, to give the answers. That's the key. And we go over here. He says, if any man will do his will, this is quoting Jesus, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God. You know, there was a lot of confusion in Christ's day because there were false Christs. Different ones claiming to be Christ. And he's saying, look, if you really want to do the will of the Father, you will know if I'm speaking just to myself or if I'm who I claim to be. And I have found that to be true of all teachings. If we want to do the will of God, we will be open to this word, to follow. And I have found through the years, and I'm sure you are too, when you study the word of God, sometimes you find things that are different than what you believed before. But I've discovered that, okay, God, if that's your will for me, okay, I need grace that I'm doing. Okay, then let's go on. Jesus promises here, those that obey, you'll keep them from the hour of temptation. You would fill that out. From the hour of temptation. And they'll have right to the tree of life. And enter into the gates of the city. Remember, next time you have these old filled out. It takes a little longer than they will be sure we get them to you. And remember, Revelation can be understood. The Bible interprets itself. And God has a life and death message in it that we need to understand. As was in the days of Noah. Those that chose not to believe Noah, they didn't get the book. And uh, this one here is uh, kind of your own thought. Um, as the Holy Spirit of God shows you great truths about Jesus from the book of Revelation, are you willing to obey those truths? And show them personal answer. Okay, now we're going to finish off here. You did get this envelope when you came in. I'd like to have you pull it up right now and put your name on it. Print. If you're like me, you couldn't read it because I wrote it. So, put your name on it. Because this will be some feedback to me. We're going to have a quiz in a minute. And your quiz answers will go there on number one through five on the right. You'll be able to put your score on it. And I'm going to have a couple of response questions for you because I, I need to get some feedback from you. And the session number, this is number one. So put a number one there. If you have any questions or prayer requests, you see at the bottom, please place questions or requests on the back. You're welcome to write them on the back. And uh, the seminar is free to you. No charge whatsoever. Others have paid for it in the past. Um, if you would like to contribute something along the way for the seminar, you're welcome to. Uh, you, can, you can put whatever you might like to give inside the envelope. This will be given to the ladies as you leave. And also, you notice there's a little place there for a receipt. If you decide you want to get a receipt for anything you might give. Okay. You, you got it? Here we go. True, false. Let's see what kind of teacher I am. Number one. Now, you're going to be putting these answers. One through five, see? The revelation of Jesus Christ came from God the Father, who gave it to his son Jesus, who delivered it to an angel, who passed on to John, who wrote it down for us. Is that true or false? Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number two. One principle of Bible study is to let the Bible explain itself. True or false? Number three. Those who read, hear, and practice in their life the words and thoughts of revelation of Jesus Christ are promised a special blessing. True or false? Number four. If I'm taking a class in college, I'd like to be with some of you. I hear the answers. That's okay. The revelation of Jesus has been unveiled in our day to prepare people for Christ's return. True or false? 
has been unveiled in our day to prepare people for Christ's return. And the last one, those who are willing to do God's will will understand the revelation as they study it. True or false? Okay. The revelation of Jesus Christ came from God the Father, who gave it to his son Jesus, delivered to the angel of John, not John Christ. True or false? What you got? True. True. Right. One principle of Bible study is let the Bible explain itself. True. True. Very important principle. Those who read here, practice in their life, the words, the thoughts, the revelation of Jesus Christ are promised a special blessing. True. True. The only book that does it. Those who read here and practice in their life. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the revelation of Jesus has been unveiled in our day to prepare people for Christ's soon return. True. True. Now, Satan wants you to think it's hidden. It's sealed. Don't believe it. You can understand. And number five, those who are willing to do God's will will understand Revelation of this idea. Okay. With your score at the top, five, four, three. How many got it all? All of them right. Excellent. Excellent. Good. You didn't know you could get a quiz, did you? <laughs> we'll do that at the end of each lesson. It's kind of fun. And see how we, how we did. Um, a couple of response questions. This is this number one through four at the top right. Just real quick. If tonight, today's study makes sense to you, put an X in box one. That little box one. One through four. If this makes sense to you, put an X in box one. If you want to learn more about the book of Revelation, put an X in box two. And if you have a special request for prayer, put an X in box three. And, and please write that prayer request on the back and we take these seriously. Uh, there's power in prayer, right? And prayer allows God to hear and answer. So if you have a prayer request, please write it on the back. And we're going to repeat this many times for every Bible teaching. Guess who has a counterfeit? Yeah. So next time, you're going to get book on that book. Lesson two, as you leave today, you will receive uh, lesson two. Be sure you get that. And uh, be sure to give your envelope to the ladies as you leave. And if you know of friends or family that might like to come, uh, invite them. We'll give you another handbill. And this is why it's important to get involved early. I like math. I always enjoy math. And, uh, but I learned something. I couldn't jump right into calculus without taking basic math and algebra and trigonometry, right? You kind of grow in the knowledge of that. Same with God's Word. So see, what we're doing here in the beginning, we're laying foundation, which is important to understand, so that as we get into the deeper studies of Revelation, we will have that foundation. So if you know anyone, family members or friends, that really enjoy studying the Bible and prophecy, let them know and welcome you come. Well, let's have prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the time we've had to study. We thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to guide us as we study daily, and, and bless, as you promised in the book of Revelation, you will bless as we study and hear and seek to follow your word. And I just thank you for this privilege we've had today. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, next meeting, Wednesday. Same time, same place. <laughs>